Uh, some of these comps have to be read to be believed. Uh, total active providers up 900, uh, total visits up 400 percent, revenue up 80. I guess I'll just start by asking, what do you think the street sees that it doesn't like today? Well, I don't really want to react to the stock price. It may go up and down. We're very encouraged to read the reports from a very smart analyst this morning. Most of them, if not all of them, are as bullish as we are about the future of the company and uh, what we are doing. We are really laser focused on realizing the vision of the company more than anything else. Well, talk to me about the, the tailwinds, which are obviously more than evident at this point. Um, you know, but if we move to an era where we're talking about America and the world post pandemic, how much of telehealth sticks in general? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, pretty amazing things have happened. Only last year, only 8% of Americans tried telehealth. Uh, this year, 22% of uh, consumers tried the telehealth for the first time. Interestingly enough, last year, 22% of providers tried telehealth. And right now, with 80% of the doctors tried the telehealth. There was, there was a sea change in telehealth awareness and uh, popularity. When you look at our own visits that, as you know, and you mentioned, they jumped uh, very dramatically, and the traction uh, grew uh, from um, up to 62,000 active uh, providers from about 4,000 uh, last uh, year, we can really see readiness to look at telehealth not as a service to talk to doctor you never met around the very simple areas, but rather as a legitimate modality to connect uh, patients with their own doctors that they can see in person and uh, trust. Uh, based on our dialogue with our clients and partners, we are pretty confident that that trend is never going back. That trend is here to stay and it's going to transform the way we think about telehealth or healthcare in general. Dr. Ito, digging into that question of sustainability, what are some specific appointments or virtual visits that you think can still be done virtually once the economy fully reopens and we have a vaccine? Well, you know, uh, McKinsey did a study recently that estimated that 20% of current healthcare can easily move uh, into telehealth. We have a fraction of percent that are doing that now. Others are even, even much more uh, bullish. When you think about the role of telehealth, uh, people mistake it to think as a simple thing like video conferencing between two points. It can do much more. When we talk about digital connectivity, we talk about a reality where most of our care is moving home. During the home, we can collect much more information continually from our body. We can understand it much better by using analytics in the cloud. We can think about new ways to cater for chronic illness and other uh, situations and engage with patients and doctors in a new way that is fully integrated with existing payment methodologies from payers and uh, employers. Saying it another way, we think that uh, in the next few years, you're going to find out that care is infinitely more accessible, infinitely more convenient, infinitely more democratic, uh, whether you live in a big town and lucky enough to go to wonderful third-year center or uh, not as lucky and living uh, far away in a small uh, community, people will still get the care they need, not only as it relates to mm. cold and sniffles, but really through the entire continuum of care. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.